Welcome to Calvary Bible Baptist Church. If you would, the Psalms 20, verse 7. Psalm chapter 20, verse 7. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Save, Lord, let the King hear us when we call. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to be Christians. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your blessings and your truths. Father, we pray now that you would send your Holy Spirit in to edify us and encourage us and strengthen us in these days of testing. Amen. Now, I imagine it's pretty much this way all through history. Uh, people have a lot of different things they put trust in. Some trust in chariots, and all the kings are dead, and some in horses, and all their... Um, armies are gone, but we remember the name of our, the Lord of our God. He's eternal. He's still on the throne. They are all brought down and fallen. Obviously, that's what I just said, and that's what God's saying, but we are risen and stand upright. There's going to be a day when we're going to stand with the Lord for all eternity. Save, Lord. Let the King hear us when we call, and so our call uh, for today is for the Lord to hear us as we try to witness and that the Lord would save more people. Tomorrow is Memorial Day. It is a day to remember those who have fallen in battle and to keep us safe and free from our enemies. But it's a temporary thing. We have an eternity that we really need to deal with. This is fit and right to do, as today is Sunday, a day to remember our first love. And unto the angel of the church of Euphemus write, these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and how thou cannot bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. You need to understand in the historical context, Euphemus is the first church. It's, there's seven churches in the book of Revelation. They represent the seven ages or the times of the churches. And these churches, um, the first one is Euphemus. It's a church that's fully purposed. It is founded off of the apostles. So it is right close to the Lord's sojourning on earth with us. And these individuals... All of the apostles that we know of die as martyrs for the Lord. And the Lord speaks and says to this church that follows just after them, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. It's easy to forget your first love. It's easy to forget when you first came together with enthusiasm and embrace. It's very easy for humans to not remember My beloved is mine, and I am his. He feedeth among the lilies. My beloved is mine. What a verse of scripture hath more joy than this verse. Now, if you've ever had a wedding day, and some of you have it, and some of you have, well, I had many years ago. And it was a day where my wife and I, who had been separate and never knew each other for many years, we had met and we had fallen in love and we decided to get married and then on that day we became one that's the way it is with salvation you walk in this earth in this life and you trust in various things and you have an emptiness in your soul who am i where am i going what's life all about what's going to happen to me when i die and then you meet your first love your savior you repent of your sins you trust christ as your lord and savior and there's a joy that comes. There's a relief from sins forgiven. There's a relief uh, from not knowing where you're going to go when you die. Because now you know where eternity is and it's settled. Everybody loves a wedding. But you know, moms grow old and dads grow fat. And after time, the first love is forgotten. And that's a big mistake. My beloved is mine and I am his. 
so full of assurance, so overrunning with happiness and contentment, its joy is assuring the light to the soul. Beloved, this may be your present state of mind. You know, doubt, you, you know, doubt your salvation. You know that Jesus is yours, but you are not feasting with him. Uh, you understand your vital interest in him so that you have no shadow of doubt of your being his and his being yours, but still his left hand is not under your head nor does his right hand embrace you. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Until the day break and the shadows flee away, turn, my beloved, and be thou like a roe or a young heart upon the mountains of Bether. Now, it's interesting that Bether, these mountains, they are division, and, and, and mountains, uh, ranges, they make divisions in the land. And so there's the division, and what is the division? A loss and a lack of the first love. The mountains of division. There's a word, too, about the mountains of Bether or the mountains of division. And to our love, anything like division is bitterness. A shade of sadness is cast over your heart, perhaps by affliction, certainly by temporary absence of your Lord. Even so, while exclaiming, I am his, and you are forced to take your knees and pray. I remember my wife and I on our wedding day with that great joy. But it's not long in the process of time that division comes between a man and a woman. There's a conflict of interest, and there's an argument, a dispute. There's a bitterness that develops. There's a selfishness that enters in, and the first love is forgotten. It needs to be restored. We have a purpose in life that God created us for. The Bible tells us and reminds us of it. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. I don't know if you understand this or not, but the purpose of your life was for you to bring pleasure to your creator, for you to bring pleasure to God. If you really love him, and you see, this is the deception of love in America today. America love is based on Hollywood lust. That's not what love is. Jesus said, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. I am the good shepherd and I give my life for the sheep. If you're going to marry a woman and you tell her you love her, you should be willing to sacrifice for her because that is what love is. If you're going to marry a gentleman and you tell that individual you love them, then you should be willing to sacrifice for them because that's what love is. You see, America believes love is getting. God believes and teaches and knows that, God is, that uh, love is giving. Greater love hath no man than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Americans base their love on selfishness. God bases his love on giving and sacrifice. That's God, and that's a difference between man and God. That's what's happening to our culture. Our culture started a, a definite turn away from a, a godly culture in the 50s, and they came out with this uh, free love, which was free um, um, thievery, stealing, greed. It wasn't love. It was lust, free lust. And God is love. Loving God requires that we know him in a personal way and seek to be a pleasure to him. Very few, far and rare, are Christians that know God. If you do not know that Bible, you do not know God. And you have to first learn the Bible before you can really get to know the God that wrote the Bible. Christians fail to realize that. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments. <clears throat> a lot of Christians, well, I asked and I asked and I didn't get and I didn't get. Did you ever give? Did you ever keep his commandments? And do those things which are pleasing to sight. Are you doing those things? I trow not. Does a father bless or reward a child that's in rebellion all the time? If he does, you just make him more rebellious and more of a brat. 
And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of the Son of Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandment dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. God's Spirit is not of the world. God's Spirit is a different spirit. If all you have is the world's Spirit, you've never been born again. You've never been changed. <clears throat> Nothing between my soul and my Savior, not of this world's delusive dream. I have renounced all sinful pleasure. Jesus is mine. There's nothing between my soul and my Savior. So that his blessed face may be seen, nothing preventing the least of his favor. Keep the way clear. Let nothing between my soul and my Savior. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth. If you have God's spirit, you have a spirit of truth. Truth does not offend you. Truth is embraced, whom the world cannot receive. The world does not want truth because its father is the devil, and he was a murderer and a liar and abode not in the truth. And so the devil's children learn to live in lies. God's people learn to live in truth because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And so God gives the Holy Spirit to those that are born again. Nothing between like worldly pleasure, habits of life through harmless they seem, must not my heart from him ever sever. He is my all. There's nothing between. Nothing between like pride and station. Self or friends shall not intervene. Though it may cost me much tribulation, I am resolved there's nothing between my Savior and me. And so we're commanded, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? Those that love a lie and those that love a truth have no fellowship. And what concord hath Christ with Baal? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For yea, the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be a separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Nothing between like worldly pleasure. Nothing between like pride and station. Nothing between my Savior and me, though many hard trials, though the whole world against me convene, watching with prayer and much self-denial, I'll triumph at last. There's nothing between my Savior and me. The Bible is very clear. Draw an eye to God, and he will draw an eye to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Draw an eye to God. God is nigh, but thou hast lost thy first love. You know, that church, it was a good church. It was a working, laboring church, like our church. You folks came out and worked yesterday. You folks go on door knocking and visitation. You folks clean your church here. You guys do service. Uh, our organist plays the piano. Uh, <laughs> our pianist plays the piano. but it lost its first love. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed towards his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints who do minister. I can tell you for 42 years of marriage, there's a lot of times that my wife and I, we'd have our differences or whatever, and, and we would remain married, but we wouldn't be close to one another. We'd lost the first love of the day of the marriage. And you have to restore it. It comes and goes in every marriage. It comes and goes in every relationship of every Christian with their Lord and Savior, and it needs to be restored. You can be working and serving the Lord, and that's a good thing. I highly recommend it. Keep on serving Him. Instant, in season, and out of season. 
but don't lose your first love. God wants your heart. It was a church that would not tolerate evil. That's a wonderful thing today. Most churches today are embracing evil, embracing the world. A lot of churches want to bring contemporary Christian music into the church because they want to bring the world into the church. They want to bring that spirit of selfishness, that spirit of lust, that spirit of pride, that spirit of ego. They don't want to have God's spirit. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doth good is of God, but he that doth evil hath not seen God. The hippies, the yippies came out and said, if it feels good, do it. That's sin. That's wickedness. That's embracing evil. That ought to be despised. No, if it's right, do it. If it's not right, don't do it. That's God's spirit. That's a spirit of truth. That's a spirit that God would have in you. And this church hated evil. They understood the separation of the, of the church was from the world and holiness and not simply in physical location. Cursed be he that doth the work of the Lord deceitfully, and cursed be he that keepeth back his sword from blood. They understood the work of God must be in principles of godly righteousness, not in the ways of the world and the flesh, which most of the churches have gone to, which have brought upon us the great fallen away. The reason that Christianity is diminishing is because Christians compromised and left their first love. And they did it to gain. And we're not to gain, we're to give. They understood that the work of God must be principles of godly righteousness. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who should be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangle himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for the masteries, yet he is not crowned, except he strive lawfully. Christians have forgotten that you can only serve God in righteousness. If you're serving in unrighteousness, you're not serving God, you're not bringing a pleasure to him. You're serving the world and the devil. You may deceive yourself, and you may be under delusion that you're doing, I'm going to be a rebel for God. You're going to go to hell with that attitude if you're not born again. You can't be a rebel for God. Submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. When I, my delight is in the Lord is no longer as great as my delight in someone else. I've lost my first love. You want to know how you lost your first love? You put something else or someone else before God. For by him were all things created. He's your creator. That are in heaven and earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Jesus Christ should have the preeminence. There's nothing more important for you as a Christian than your relationship with God. It's more important than your soul winning, and you should be soul winning. It's more important than your service, and you should be serving. There is nothing that is not more important than your relationship with God. It's even more important that I'm in favor of marriage and being faithful, and I have been faithful, and my wife has been faithful for 42 years, but our individual personal relationships to God is even more important than that. God needs to have the preeminence in all things, or you've lost your first love. When we place anything or anyone before our Lord in his truth and righteousness, it is called in the scriptures respect of persons and is the same form of idolatry and worship of the Antichrist. Those who would take a position in the seat of jealousy found in Ezekiel will find themselves as the Antichrist, a recipient of the Lord's great displeasure. God says, my glory, I will not give to another. Ministers that get into pulpits and take God's glory 
when they're supposed to preach and declare God's glory, God's righteousness, God's truth, God's holiness, God's goodness, God's grace, God's love, will be so displeased someday. For there's no respect of persons with God. For as many as sinned without the law, so all shall perish without the law. And as many as sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Do you really want to know God's holiness and righteousness? Most people have watched the movie Old Yeller. It's a heart-rendering movie, especially in the end when faithful Old Yeller is executed. We often talk, preach, and teach about God's wrath and God's judgment, and we seem to have that in the sense of vindictiveness and vengeance that mortal men have. That's not the way that God brings his judgment and wrath upon people. No, it's Old Yeller was a faithful dog, but it was, it was bitten by the wolf, and it was infected with the rabies, like man is infected with sin. And that rabies drove that good and faithful dog insane. And that dog became, uh, that was the beloved friend, became the enemy. And so that dog had to be exterminated. And that's what God does with sinful people who will not repent and receive the blood saying to save their lives. You see, there should have been and there needs to be a serum for that rabies. But there's one for salvation for your sin. It's the shed blood of Christ. And without that miraculous transfusion supernaturally through faith in Jesus Christ shed blood on Calvary's cross, repentance from sin and turning to Christ as a sinner on the way to hell, you're going to be exterminated because you're infected with the madness of rabies, the lust of sin. Saved Christians don't realize how dangerous their flesh is. Many a saved Christian has committed capital sins after their salvation because they didn't crucify that flesh and put it down. Your flesh is infected. Your flesh is dangerous. You need a new heart and a new spirit, and you need to have your spirit, the spirit of Christ in you, controlling and submissive to that flesh. When my soul does not long for times of rich fellowship in God's word or prayer, I've lost my first love. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? If your heart isn't longing, you know, my job as a minister, and I'm sure I'm failing at it, is to get you in a state where you don't want any part of this world and you just pray and want, even so come Lord Jesus, where you want God here. You need to get sick of this world and excited about heaven and about righteousness and truth and God's glory and God's reign. It's a difficult job for a pastor to preach today. He gets you on a Wednesday and a Sunday and the world's just blasting you with anti-God rhetoric all week long. As the heart panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. Rare is the Christian that has that spirit today. Be that rare Christian, be that pearl, be that gem. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? When my thoughts during leisure moments do not reflect upon the Lord, I have lost my first love. For the wicked boasts of his heart's desire and blesses the covetous, who the Lord abhorreth. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. The wicked thinks of earthly glory, earthly fame, earthly acceptance. All of it's corrupt. It's based on pride and position and station, not on righteousness 
and holiness and truth and goodness and godliness. God is not about gain. Though God would teach us how to gain and prosper in righteousness and truth, for it is more blessed to give than to receive gain. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. He's proud, knowing nothing but doing, doubting about questions and strife of words, wherefore cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmising, perverse disputing men of corrupt minds, destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself, but godliness with contentment, first love, is great gain. Nothing between my Savior and me. For we are brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we can carry nothing out, and having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. When I claim to be only human and easily given to those things I know displease the Lord, I have certainly lost my first love. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Now, I don't understand this unless it's... A, reaction against false doctrine and I can accept it to a point but you need to understand once you're saved you're always saved you can't lose it it's God's glory God's goodness God's grace God's blood God's truth God's honor God's character that saves you but that doesn't mean you're going to live for him or you're going to keep him as your first love Jesus said if you love me that's your first love keep my commandments if you love the Lord and you're saved by grace through faith plus nothing and you love him, you'll keep his commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he should give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth. And God will talk to you, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I'm a Bible pastor that believes we are saved by grace through faith and not by works of the law. However, we are to learn to walk in the spirit in the liberty of Jesus Christ, loving the righteousness of the law, because those who walk in the spirit of grace, loving the liberty of Jesus Christ, will first love his commandments. If you have your first love, you'll want to know what your love would have you to do so that you can please him. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Christians today don't have the spiritual joy that they should have, and you can have it when you have your first love. People need to remember how much you were excited about your spouse and how much interest you had in them before and up to the time you married them and then how easily it can diminish and it needs to be replenished and restored we take things for granted when I do not willingly and cheerfully give to God's work or to the needs of others, I've lost my first love. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it should be measured to you again. It's more blessed to give than to receive. As we learn to give of ourselves for the redemption and success of others, we become like our Lord and Savior. Sacrificial. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. 
How do I know I've lost my first love? When I cease to treat every Christian brother as I would the Lord, I have lost my first love. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. For whoso has this world's good and seeth his brother have need and shut up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? How do I know I've lost my first love? When I view the commands of Jesus Christ as restrictions to my happiness rather than expressions of his love, I've lost my first love. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. If you really have Jesus Christ as your first love, then you're going to want to be with him and like him. You're going to want to be conformed to his image. If you really love him, if you're really enamored by him, if he is your first love, you'll want to be like him. How do I know I've lost my first love? When I inwardly strive for the acclaim of this world rather than the approval of the Lord, I've lost my first love. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. How do I know I've lost my first love? When I fail to make Jesus Christ or his words known because I fear rejection, I've lost my first love. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny myself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Your first love is everything. He is your life. He is your hope. He is your future. He is your resurrection. He is your salvation. He's your God. Cross-bearing is not found in the church of Laodicea, where Jesus Christ is on the outside knocking to get in. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous. Therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Do you have fellowship with God? Are you reading the scriptures and is his spirit speaking to you and your spirit speaking to him? Do you meditate on the things that you've read from the scriptures? Oh, you've spent no time in the scriptures. You've lost your first love. How do I know I've lost my first love? When I refuse to give up questionable activities, which I know is offending a weaker brother, I've lost my first love. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. When I refuse to give up questionable activities, I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that steameth anything to be unclean, to him it's unclean. Look, don't make things that are not unclean, unclean, so that you can do something that you don't want to do. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably. Destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. Let not then your good be evil spoken of. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that's in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. For meat, destroy not the work of God. Boy, a lot of Christians have done that. For their own lust, they've destroyed God's work. 
and they expect God's going to bless them. He may have saved them. But like the world that God created, that after he created it, it repented the Lord that he'd made man. I'm sure there are many saved Christians that the Lord would have had a different outcome for their lives. But they chose their way rather than his way. How do I know I've lost my first love? When I become complacent to sinful conditions around me, I've lost my first love. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. America has been fed the doctrine of Balaam for 50 years. The country has become filthy and depraved and degenerate. And it's affected the body of Christ negatively. How do I know I've lost my first love? When I'm unable to forgive another for offending me, I have lost my first love. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. The brother has to repent. You see, people are so content with sin and a filthy, corrupted world today, they think that they have a license that they can just keep causing sin and doing sin, and you have some obligation to forgive them and forgive them. They have an obligation to repent. If he repent, forgive him. No repentance, no forgiveness. Now, I forgive everybody, everything. There's two types of forgiveness. You want to learn it. You want to forgive everybody, everything, so that you have no bitterness in your heart and the devil has no hold on your soul. But real fellowship restoring comes from repentance. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. Our liberty in Christ has never, ever been a license to sin. It's been God's grace to allow us to keep serving him because of our weakness of sin. Tomorrow, we're going over to March in the Parade. We're going to hand out those DVDs. Let's not do it for anything other than our first love. And let's remember the shed blood. Let's remember his dying love on Calvary's cross. Let us serve him as our first love. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to be Christians. Father, we thank you for your goodness. And Father, we want to keep you always as our first love. In Jesus' name we pray.